thanks for choosing to watch the video. If you enjoy it, then please like and subscribe and all that stuff. It's a beautiful day. We're allowed to go fishing again. And in this one, we're surface fishing for carp. So like I said, the sun is shining and that can only mean one thing for me and that is to grab a, a, a little amount of gear, a short rod, um, some floaters and get out there surface fishing for carp. The thing is about lockdown, the fact that people haven't been able to go fishing for ages, that means that every man and his dog are out on the bank fishing. I didn't know where to go, but I did know I fancied somewhere different. So what I did, I've come to Chigborough Fisheries, uh, which is in Essex. Never been here before. Uh, it's a day ticket fishery. You book it online. You've got, I think, three lakes here. Uh, I'm fishing the main lake um, and I've come in completely blind, completely blind. Um, I've got to be honest, I'm at the end of the session now and it has been hectic. I, you know, I started at about didn't even get here that early because I wanted it, because I'm surface fishing, I wanted the sun to be fairly high in the sky. So I didn't really start fishing till about half 10, 11 o'clock. Um, I've finished now, it's about three uh, in the afternoon. Uh, and in that short space of time, I've had quite a few fish, um, which I'm really pleased about. Because as I say, completely new to the venue, know nothing about it, um, came in completely blind and just relied on looking around, finding some fish, looking for opportunities, and um, and yeah, trying to bag a few fish, and, uh, and it's gone well. So yeah, when I got here, as always, first thing I did was get the, the, uh, uh, the minimum amount of stuff that I needed out the car, and I'll take you through that, I'll take you through what, what I actually bring with me, the rod, the reel, and the other bits and pieces, but, uh, I, I got the, the as little amount of stuff out of the car as I could to get the job done. First thing I did was look around the lake. Sh to my surprise, um, or should I say not really to my surprise, a lot of people are in the main body of the lake, sunning themselves, reclining in the sun with the three rods on the bottom, uh, waiting for something to happen. Not really my style, particularly in these conditions. I've, I've got one rod, one reel, um, a tiny amount of stuff and in a few hours I've had about eight fish so it's been crazy. First thing I did was have a good look around the lake. What was really important I had my Polaroid glasses on uh, so that I could see what I was doing and uh, in true fashion um, the further and further I got away from the car park the less and less people were were there um, which which means I'm as far away from the car park as I can possibly be now, right up the far end of the lake. And uh, yeah, there's not many people up here and a whole stack of fish. So <laughs> happy days. I looked at a number of different swims until, uh, before I got to this one. It was obvious the fish were here. Started feeding mixers and it didn't take long for them to get on it. And it didn't take me long at all to get my first fish. But rather than me tell you about it, let's look at the footage. Chig, new lake, never fished it. Only been here 45 minutes. And I'm feeding, whoa, look at that. Whoa. This one's storming off. Oh, I need to be a bit careful here. Oh, that's quite a lot of weed. So I want to keep them moving. 
first fish from a new lake. Look at the rod. Oh, I thought it'd come off then. Oh, it's twisting and turning. Oh, he's got some power. Just got to keep him up because of this weed. It's oh, giving it some. Like this weed I've got all over the line. And you've got a little hook, size 10. It's hard to tell what size it is because of the weed. I might use this tactic of just deadly walking back. If he lunges, I let him go. Just gotta be patient here. Yeah. Whoa. Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, wonder how deep it is. I've got dragging through quite a big ball of weed. I haven't got direct contact with them at all here. Oh, it's gonna be tricky to net. Uh, I've just gotta get him. Under all of it, I think. Oh, yes. Oh, oh my god. Oh, epic. <laughs> oh, Christ almighty. Ah, he's safely in the net. First thing to do, get more mixers out. And hopefully, while I'm taking the photos, by the time I'm back, they'll be on the feed again. So, wasn't sure where to go, to be honest, today, but decided to try somewhere new. Never fished Chigra before, but I've seen it in videos and some nice dark commons. And there we go. Managed to come here and get one myself. Really pleased with that, off the top. Got them feeding fairly quick. And uh, yeah, this one slipped up. Really stunning. Getting back because they're still munching out there. Let's see if we can get another. Absolutely going for it. off of it there. Absolutely smacking it. Any of the fish out there? Come on, one's got to have it. There we go. I think one would have it. Rod's well hooped over. Oh, they're awesome. Oh. Now, I put that fish back, and that's been in the water for five minutes. They're absolutely troughing. This could be a very good day. What I need to do is spend less time filming to be honest. Um, I spent longer filming than I have fishing. Let's get the net. Let's see if we can scoop him up. Make sure that's not too Whoa, let him go. Oh, this is magic. Really hot day. Minimal amount of gear. One rod. A little bit of bait. Oh. 
Number two, so they're really having it. This is fish number two. This time, nice mirror. Look at that. Corking. Isn't he stunning? Ah, I don't know what he weighs. It's got to be enough to double what I thought. Maybe a bit bigger, who knows, who cares. So pleased with that. Gaining the rod 15 minutes. Spent longer photographing and filming than they are fishing. So what I want to do now is just take you through uh, the rig that I use for my surface fishing. So here I have got cruiser control. In this situation, we've got a lot of weed. I'll be stepping it up to the 12 pound. In terms of the length of the hook length, um, I remember that when I was younger, we were always told that when floater fishing to have really long hook lengths, like six foot, something like that. And in some situations when fish are being really cautious and stuff like that, I will fish a long hook length, uh, but very rarely these days. What I tend to do is I get the fish uh, really competing for the food to the point that you can then get away with using a short hook length. One that literally is, and you'll be surprised, one and a half foot, two foot max. So quite short. The reason I want it to be short is because this style of controller, these bolt style controllers, you really do emphasize that bolt effect with a shorter hook length. First thing we need to do is make a tiny little loop to hold on our hook bait. So hopefully you can see that, just a small loop. The next thing I'm gonna do is put on a small hook, a size 10 core and power hook and I'm gonna knot this knot back on. Now what's critical here is that you have a short hair, much shorter than you normally would if you're fishing on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. That's what we got at this point. I'm just gonna put on a pop-up. They're a similar sort of color to the mixers. Now what I do with the pop-up is that I use my nail to sort of take bits off of it so that it becomes more sort of mixer shaped. And so there you go, that's what I've ended up with. Hopefully you can see that. That trim down pop-up is touching the shank of the hook. You know, it really is tight to the hook. And it's at this point that I sort of decide on the length of it. So I'm gonna use scissors, not your teeth, obviously. So I'm now tying on a size eight swivel. It has to be size eight, because I know that's what locks into the, uh, into the controller. Tied that on with a five turn grin or not. And there we go, that's my hook length completed. It's about one and a half, two foot in length. As a swivel I've just added to the top. Now I need to attach it to the main line. To be honest, my standard setup would be probably a 12 pound main line and a 10 pound hook length. However, you know, the weed means that um, I'm using a 12 pound hook length. And uh, the rules on the website for, the, um, for this lake, they say that you've got to have a minimum of 15 pound line uh, as a main line. And that is important. You know, yeah, we want to go light on our line when we're floater fishing but also check the rules, make sure that you're keeping everything above board in terms of the minimum braking strain they expect you to use. Now this particular bolt style controller comes with, I don't know if you can see it, a little nodule in the end, a rubber nodule. Well, I take that out, put that to one side, thread this onto the main line, putting the line down the tube. So, just threading the line through. I then get the little rubber insert that I took out of it. I thread that onto the line. Then all I've got to do is tie the main line to the swivel of the hook length. Again, I use a grinner knot for that. Always have used grinner knots ever since I was a kid. So now the swivel's there, and then you just got to sort of pull it all down into place, get the rubber insert, put that back into the controller, just take the main line, pull the swivel up, into the rubber insert as far as it will go and that's it and then you're you're set up you're good to go 
So you've got main line down to the controller, fairly short hook length through to a trim down pop up. And that is the rig that I will use for all of my floater fishing. Um, the only thing that I vary is the length of that hook length. So that's my surface rig. Let's get back to the fishing. Get the bait going out. Got another one. Fish number three. This is crazy. Got them absolutely chomping. Just got the bait trickling in all the time. So much weed, but the tackle seems to be coping with it all right. And they're still troughing while I'm playing this. Each time they're coming in with a big ball of weed. This is great fun. How good is it to be out fishing again? After weeks of being locked indoors. I mean, can you beat this? Look at the old the rod. These rods are perfect for this sort of fishing. Absolutely perfect. Only 10 foot long. You know, I've got very used to short rods now. Very hard to go back to 12 footers, I think. <laughs> Last couple of seasons, I've been fishing nine and 10 foot rods. You know, when you're trying to move around, it's so much better. Edge, yeah. <sighs> One last pull. It's refusing to give up this one. Absolutely refusing to give up. <laughs> Jesus, they're strong. <sighs> the added wheat weight of the ball of weed as well. Uh, come on. Yes. Oh, oh, carry on. Number three. There we go. Fish number three. Absolutely going off. Need to get the rods back out fairly quick. Fantastic. Been absolutely troughing. Really have. <sighs> Quite exhausted. It's one of those sessions where it just completely and utterly goes off. Come around now and then, don't they? It's one of those. What I like to do, and I don't know why, I've always done it. I have two spots going, not just one. I'll do one over there. And I'll do one over here. Don't know why. I think it just sort of gives me options, you know? Feels like it gives me options. And depending on where they're troughing most, that's where I'll put the hook bait. Come in there, look. There you go, you see, the spot on the right's gone quiet. Try the spot on the left. Perfect. Obviously, you want to cast past the feeding fish, just kind of draw it back. Let's get 
bit more bite around that. Always like to use a throwing stick as well. It's another thing that I've always done. Too many times I've had catapults where the elastics have gone at a critical time. There we go. Wow, 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 wow. Jesus Christ. There we go. Water absolutely erupted as it took it then. Oh, he's got some speed, this one. See, it's the thing about these commons. Probably won't be a common now, I said that, but they do motor. Crotty knows where he's going, right? Got to clamp down on this one. Started to head into that corner. Absolutely headed for it. None of the other fish have done that. Booted for this. There's a little bay to my right. Knew exactly what he was doing. And again, Long, huge amount of weed. Nearly, nearly didn't have the drag loose enough there, did you see it? Oh my word. Uh, flat rodded by a a little common. <sighs> All right, we need to get this one in as quick as we can because we're catching a lot of fish and I'd like to think, the thing is with a new lake, and it is new to me this one, I don't really know what the stock's like. You know, I don't, I don't know anything. Uh, I've had a couple of nice, lovely fish though, uh, but I, I really don't know what the average stamp is. Bloody hell. Don't know what the average stamp is, and yeah, I, I don't really know much. I'm not sure. <laughs> Going, fish is in the net, it's not going anywhere. Get some bait out. So important just to keep them going when they're like this. I'm picking them off from the left and the right now. go another angry little common I'm gonna to start to lose count I think a really nice looking dark fish though ain't they and they're a right handful I tell you brilliant what I'm gonna do now is just take you through the the outfit that I use for my floater fishing. So it's a Corum Opportunist rod, two and a quarter pound test curve, 10 foot long, which is perfect when you're stalking and you're floater fishing. You don't want a long rod. 10 foot is absolutely perfect. Forgiving enough, um, but also got enough backbone when you need it. And you've seen in this session, I've had quite a lot to, to combat here. There's quite a lot of weed and um, some very hard fighting fish. You know, some of those commons, they're not massive fish, but I tell you, they really, really pull back. And um, this has coped with them fantastically, it really has. And I've coupled that rod with a Corum Axis 4000 reel. Um, and the whole thing just balances really nice. Here's the minimum amount of stuff that I've got. Basically, a bucket, that's got my bait in, that's got my mixers in. Um, 
I've actually put in there like some sweet corn and some pellets and a few other bits in case it wasn't going to happen on the top. But mainly that will have um, that will have my mixers in. And if I need to sit on saying this is what I'll sit on. Um, so that's the bucket, small bag. So in this bag, um, I haven't got a lot in here. Camera equipment, some water, really important. A couple of the little transition pouches that have just got bits and pieces in, like hooks and stuff like that. Um, I've got another one of these in there as well that's got different lines in and stuff like that. That's about it in there, to be honest. A little bit of tackle, uh, camera equipment, and that's all that's really in the bag. I'll say this. So, so if you think about what you need, got controllers, got different monos in there, different hooks, swivels, bits and pieces, uh, as well as food and, and drink and suntan lotion and, and whatever, you know, but, but it's in a pretty compact little bag, you know, that's it. And finally, got the unhooking mat. I carry my unhooking mat along and wrapped inside that, I've got my rod, I've got my landing net and I've got my throwing stick. Um, that's about it. <laughs> um, that really is all you need. And I think it's really, really important not to take more than you need. You're not going to be mobile if you take more than you need. So that's what I take uh, when I really am stripping down to the bare minimum. You joined me back at the house because um, I'm going to take you through some of the prep that needs to be done. Uh, like all short sessions, there is some preparation that needs to be done at home before you go. Stuff, you know, you don't want to be doing out on the bank. I prepare all my bait at home and that's what I'm going to take you through now. So as you've seen, um, the bulk of the bait that I'm using on the surface are, are mixers, like dog mixers. Um, all I would say on those is have plenty of them. You'll be surprised how many you can get through. So I will um, always have a few sacks um, in the car. Uh, obviously you won't be able to take that many out in the bank with you but if you do run out go back to the car get some more and then carry on um, I would always make sure that I've got plenty um, what I do is I get resealable freezer bags and I'll put the large sacks into smaller bags at home uh, and the only thing that I do with those uh, in addition to that is sometimes I might put hemp oil on some of them um, because that's sometimes useful if you're trying to surface fish and the surface layer is a bit choppy it can sometimes flatten it off. Generally speaking for hook baits as I said before I just use trim down pop-ups that are kind of like similar colour um, to, to the mixers. I have also used these in the past though as well. What's good about those is they come in two different colours in the pot they're already oiled up and um, you can use the light one if the reflection on the water is dark and you can use the dark one if the reflection on the water is light. So that is the Duo Floater Hook Baits by CC Moore. So that's just a little bit about bait, let's get back to the fishing. When they're having it like this, I've cast it, cast the controller out to the back of the swim. And I'm going to put the bait short of it. Uh, put the bait sort of short of the controller, which is important. Now, I'm going to draw the controller back slowly to where I've put that bait in. There they are. So they're still having it. Just constantly having to feed them. Try and keep them here. It's been hectic, absolutely hectic. This one going to cause me problems. That's why it's good to have two spots. This one's come in and mounted about that one. So we go over to the left. 
and we know we've got a spot going there. This is chaos. This one's giving me a run around. Okay, so it feels like we're having to work for our bites now slightly. It's not quite as crazy as it was. Um, it's been a short period of time now where I've not had a take. It just seems to be slowing down slightly. Let me go. Oh no! I thought it had it. Do you have it? No. Not being as competitive now. Which means they're not slipping up. Thinking about what they're doing much more. Oof. I've started to have to work for the bites a bit now. But we've got another. This time from the left hand spot. Oh, I can feel it coming through the weed. Oh, he feels like he's really jammed in it. Just keep steady pressure. I hope he kicks. And that will bring him out of the weed. There we go, he kicked. D steady pressure and then wait for the kick. Oh my God, look at the ball of weed with this. Could do with him kicking. That is a massive ball of weed. Oh no. I think there's still a fish on the end. The weed's gone over his eyes and he's just, look at this ball of weed. The question is, I'm gonna to have to scoop the whole lot up and hope there's a fish in it somewhere. Have we got a fish? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I literally will only know. Yes. <laughs> there is a fish. <laughs> oh, crazy. how many more I'm gonna actually catch or try and catch having to work for them a bit now uh, but you know maybe a few more uh, see how we get on Could catch these little dark commons all day long stunning <laughs> This one moving. Last one got his head down. Came in on a massive ball of weed. And try and keep him up in the water. Keep the rod high. Keep the fish moving. See, I've got him on the top there. I need to try and keep him there. I keep him on the top and I'll be all right. Clamped down on him a bit here. Just trying to get in these trees. Oh, got a rod there. Oh no, 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 no. 
no, no, no. Yep, he's away. Oh. God, they done half go. Oh, look at that. Incredible. Seems to be a few of these in here. They're fun to catch though. It's been exhausting. I must be getting old, I think. I'm nearly out of mixers. I could go back to the car, get some more. But to be honest, I think I'm done. The bikes have slowed, slowed down and I feel like I've come I've done what I came to do. Oh my word. I don't know how to fight these commons. I really do. If you want a bit of good sport on the surface, can I have a go? Come and have a go, Jigbra. Tell you what, it's not been easy on the tackle today with the weed and everything, but it's held up so well. Only got a size 10, a little size 10 quorum hook, but it's held in there with every fish. And I do like to use a small hook when I'm float fishing. Come on, enough's enough. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> is exhausting. So there's another one of those commons. I don't feel the need to pick it up for the camera. You know, we've, we've had a few of these now. Um, but they are stunning in colour, aren't they? You know, real nice dark fish. Uh, and it's been amazing sport, really good sport. Really enjoyed it. I'm gonna slip him back and then uh, maybe try for a couple more. Oh, look at the seagulls. The thing you do is always check the clutch. Always check it's just as you want it. Because uh, these, these fish, they're, they're really taking off. You know, they bolt off of these style of controllers and they, they really do bolt quite fiercely <laughs> so always make sure your clutch is as you want it I mean that goes with all the fishing there we go there we go Ooh, has he gone through a big wee bed he looks like he might have done again we've got to keep him high in the water I think this might be the last fish for me now. I don't know, I'll scrap these commons. You know, some of them ain't that big, but they don't know, I've got, I mean, it's just such good sport. You know, minimum amount of gear. Has he come off? Yeah, he's come off. <laughs> uh, well, I was going to lose one. I know, with all these, this weed. Can't win them all. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah, that's the end of the session. Really pleased how it went, especially as I know really very little about the venue. Fantastic to be out of lockdown. Amazing to be back on the bank. I hope you're all enjoying it and having a great time fishing. This has been an awesome little session and just what I needed after, after being stuck indoors all that time. Thanks again for watching the video. If you did enjoy it, then please like and subscribe and all that stuff. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.